Hello everyone, I am Pepino here, back playing Kerbal Space Program. And we are wasting no time uh, getting into this mission. And last episode, we constructed our Moonar fleet, and it's up in orbit around Kerbin right now. And this mission is going to be a refueling mission, which will also drop off three more crew members. And the plan is to drop off six probes that we're going to be able to dock to our lunar fleet and land then on the surface of the moon and hopefully uh, map out some new areas and try and discover new things. And so as you see here, we've got a decent amount of fuel as well as some extra RCS and we are just trying to get a nice intersect here as we set up our orbit and everything's looking good so far uh, we're gonna have to go all the way around Kerbin though to get uh, our closest encounter which is down fairly close and uh, like I said last episode I've got this all sped up quite a bit uh, because these are very long missions, especially with the amount of lag that I have. Um, and so, here we go, we do a burn, and we get a nice close intersect. And we can start getting close to our uh, base pusher, or I just call it the pusher. Uh, that's the ship that's going to push our fleet into orbit around the moon as well as stay in orbit uh, hopefully carrying a bunch of fuel that we can use for repeated lunar landings and the moon is there in the background as you can see there as we come in to try and dock this extra fuel and probes to our base or our fleet rather um, now this is where we start to run into trouble um, as you're going to see coming up here, uh, once we get in closer, um, this is a very large ship, our fleet, um, and it's almost too big, too many parts, really. Uh, if I could go back, one thing I learned is that uh, this may have been too many ships to try and take all up there at once and it leads to lots of unnecessary complications uh, the most prominent of which is the three frames per second and uh, yeah that's just the, I built a ship that may be a little too many parts uh, for my laptop to handle but you know it's fine I powered through it uh, just took me a very very long time um, so now we're down close to a uh, hundred meters away and we've got our crew here Jedlin, Fildo, and Coral de Kerman uh, and they are going up to join the three crew members that are already on the ship and as you can see there's quite a bit of wobble up there uh, if you're paying attention to our fleet ship and uh, that's not good but um, it's it's a bit flimsy and I think a lot of that has to do with how much weight there is on the front uh, and that little docking port is just jiggling back and forth and can't really handle it um, so we're gonna have to hope that that doesn't ever break off but here, the idea was originally, if you remember, to have all of these ships docked around the outside like those two are right now, the two one-man landers, but problems were uh, making that just about impossible. And as you can see here, uh, we run into our first problem with that. As I try to get in uh, to dock, I realize I'm hitting one of our fleet ships, and so I decide that what I'm gonna do is just dock to the back of one of these fleet ships because they all have docking ports on the bottom that'll make it easier I can transfer the fuel from there and then we can undock the probes 
and try dock them again uh, on the back of our ship and there we go we have it docked so then we begin uh, the lengthy fuel transfer which I just skipped most of because it took forever so here we go we launch a probe and I'm gonna try dock it what you can't see here because this is playing uh, at like four four times speed possibly four eight um, what you can't see here is the lag is absolutely unbearable at this point as well as the fact that I cannot still cannot set the docking port as my target where it'll show up as the target so after dealing with the lag for quite a while um, which you can probably see a little bit considering this is sped up pretty fast and it's still kind of jumping from frame to frame a little uh, yeah I'm realizing that docking all of these probes is just gonna not be a fun thing to do and uh, similar to how I thought I was gonna be able to dock all of those ships around the outside uh, it may have been just a bit too ambitious but it's okay we're learning and we learned that these giant ships are gonna cause a bunch of lag so I let the probe go somewhere where it's not gonna hit the station and then it's time to EVA the crew we're just gonna load all three of them up into this uh, base ship that we have docked here and just so that they are somewhere on the fleet and we can get them into the appropriate ships that we need them in once we are in orbit around the moon so uh, we gotta just do this three times here and you can see all three of them are just gonna go right up into this same base ship uh, and I think what I'm gonna do at least my plan is once I get around the moon uh, I'm gonna have to land as many of these ships as I can uh, so I'm gonna land probably all four bases each with one crew member because I can set up the base with one crew member and then uh, I can bring more crew there later uh, generally at a moon base you would like to have more than one uh, person living there but I can bring more people later like I said and alright there we go we undock and we'll just end that flight so that we don't have to deal with it the probe is still floating away but alright now what I have to do and this is very important I almost forgot to do this and that would have been a disaster I have to deactivate all the engines on the landing vehicles or the fleet ships whatever you want to call them because if I fired up the engines now I would have that and the mainsail pushing at the same time and it would probably blow up everything but uh, alright so here you can see I set the moon as my target and I deactivated the mainsail and I'm just using the nuclear engines at this point to see how well they're gonna be able to push my ship um, but what I'm realizing here is First of all, if I go full throttle, everything wobbles like crazy, the nuclear engines overheat, and it's just a, in general, not good thing. Um, the crew is absolutely freaking out, uh, but yeah, I realize that this is going to be very, very slow, and again, this is at 8 times speed right now, um, and it's taking forever. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if I do it quite yet, but eventually here, I'm going to activate the mainsail engine, and we are going to use that. Uh, it's going to burn more fuel, but it's going to save so much time, and we can send a refueling mission at some point out there to uh, add more fuel if we need it. So, uh, we're going to try get this and our fleet out to the moon and we are well on our way um, and now back to what I was saying before I'm gonna land uh, probably all four bases if I can with one astronaut or kerbonaut each and um, that way I can set up the bases 
and hopefully reduce some lag uh, on our station and uh, the bases are meant to stay on the surface anyway so they aren't going to need to come up for refueling so uh, then the plan would be I could maybe even land a couple of the landers and here you see I swing around to try to do another burn uh, to keep extending the apoapsis there and it's getting out to a million there as you can see and uh, we are on our way to the moon um, now uh, I realize after a little bit here that this is gonna use a lot more fuel out of our station than I had hoped we're gonna have enough fuel to do all of the missions that we need originally but if we're gonna want a permanent presence uh, doing Mooner missions, which was the goal of this station, uh, we're gonna want to have a refueling trip to the moon at some point. But here you can see my apoapsis getting out there, our closest approach coming in, and basically this was a long process to get out, but we have our Mooner encounter, and I bring our periapsis down very low just using RCS after a little while and uh, there we go we've got our Mooner encounter and now we warp all the way out until we hit the encounter and then we got to establish our orbit now I want to get the orbit as much around the equator of the moon as possible because that's just gonna make it the easiest for future missions uh, as far as refueling missions as well as just docking anything to the station really uh, it's gonna be easier if you're around the equator so that's the plan uh, we're gonna face ourselves in the right direction here that's what I'm doing now because we're gonna need to burn in retrograde to uh, get our orbit set up so here we warp down till we're at the periapsis and then uh, once we get down there we start our burn to slow ourselves down and then bring us into a very nice orbit as you can see here we're slowing down substantially and the orbits just about to come around and I realize it's a little bit off so I kinda wanna get it where it's gonna be more uh, around the equator than it is right now so I just readjust my position here and then continue the burn establishes the orbit so we are now at least in orbit so that is a good thing and uh, so so far so good and we just bring our apoapsis down and we are going to just try circularize our orbit nice and low to the moon making it easier for landers to do everything they need to do with as little fuel as possible you don't want them traveling uh, unnecessary uh, miles and using up extra fuel and as you can see we're right around 40,000 meters above the surface and that is where we will circularize our orbit and that's where our Mooner station is going to be so here we go circularizing the orbit and everything is pretty much done then so there you go this is I am Pepino thank you guys for watching and join me next time as we start our Mooner missions and remember to subscribe for more awesome videos so we'll see you next time bye bye